You turn the sound up high You turn the lights down low You turn your dial to Crescent Hill Radio To take it from Tara for June 17th, this edition is sponsored by ABC Security for Linda Herrick Hillenbrand's campaign for Woman of the Year for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And she received the Champions Award for all of her fundraising efforts for leukemia and lymphoma. So we're very proud of our friend Linda Herrick Hillenbrand and her husband Jim, who fights leukemia and lymphoma every day. We also welcome the incredible James Sane as our musical guest. We're so glad to have him with us today. The lovely and talented Becca White will be here a little later in the show for a quick catch-up on what she's doing with her life and her career. And uh, Nan Moore of the Louisville Winds joins us with Winds members Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer to play a tune or two so you can get an idea of what the Louisville Winds is like. It's a wonderful wind ensemble composed of professionals. And uh, they play several times a year around town. We'd like to introduce them to you here on Crescent Hill Radio tonight. Megan Bauer reveals the challenges of a stylist's life, hairstyling that is, and how to get through beauty school, an apprenticeship, and a career startup. And finally, Tyson's Chance Rescue is represented beautifully today by its... It's mascot, Tyson, and his mom, Ashley Shelburne, who created this beautiful rescue out of Shelby County. And she's brought Tyson to the studio to tell us what she does in her specialty of uh, bully breed and other really serious dog rescue that uh, involves a tremendous amount of effort and time and money because the types of dogs that Ashley rescues are all the ones that uh, a lot of people don't want. So we're going to be talking to them in just a moment. First of all, Mr. Sane, I love your music. Thank mm-hmm. you for being here with us again Thank tonight. You. You, you threw your apron off at Nancy's Bagels for the afternoon, had somebody fill in for you, I guess, and I hear you just came back from Bonnaroo. Yeah, I just actually came in. So I didn't go into work Oh, you today. weren't even working today. No. Well, how was the Bonnaroo experience? Hot. Was it? <laughs> did you play and go and visit and listen to music, or did you just go and have fun? I just went and, like a big kid. Like a big kid. I love it. How yeah. many people attended, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Too Tens many. of thousands? Too many. Yeah, too many. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you have plans to move a little bit later in this year down to music country in Tennessee. I want to talk to you more about that. But in the meantime, if you will uh, give us a tune, you're doing some covers today and working on some original music, and I'd love to hear one of your favorite rainy day songs, because right now we have a big thunderstorm brewing overhead. Oh, very much so. Give All us right, something well, fun. What are you going to play? Rainy day song. How about a little Bob Dylan? Then? Sounds like a good one. James Sane. Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe It don't matter anyhow Ain't no use and wonder why, babe Never do know how Yell rooster crows at the break of dawn Out the window and I'll be gone The other reason that I'm traveling don't think twice that it's all right Ain't no use in calling out my name, girl Like you never did before Ain't no use in calling out my name, girl I can't hear you anymore I'm thinking of wandering all the way down the road I once loved a woman and a child I'm told 
Give her my heart, but she she wanted my soul. But don't think twice that it's all right. Dylan song on a beautiful rainy day like this. <laughs> Thank you, James Sane. Ashley Shelburne, welcome to Take It From Tara. Hello, welcome. So glad to have you here on Crescent Hill Radio with the mascot of Tyson's Chance himself, Tyson. And Kathy's going to probably be moving the camera around a little bit to get some, some wonderful video of him. But God, he is just a beautiful dog and he was probably your biggest challenge. I'm going to move your mic up. Just okay. Here we go. He was probably your biggest challenge, wasn't he? Training wise? Probably not the biggest. No? But, no, but he was definitely uh, probably top five. So. Really? So yeah. what were what were Tyson's issues when he came to you, uh, and how did you create Tyson's Chance? Um, Tyson came out of our county shelter. Um, he was very dog aggressive, and they were having some problems with him there. Um, actually, Shelby County No Kill Mission put him into boarding with us to see if he could be um, rehabilitated. Yes. And he wasn't neutered and just a lot of dog. No manners, um, pushy, just, you know, kind of your big typical, probably someone trying to make him tough pit bull. And yes. So we got him neutered and started his training process, and now he's delightful. But he's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. You can tell because yeah. all he's done is cuddle up to everybody who's here and <laughs> sleep and lie at your feet. And you developed a specific relationship with Tyson, which enabled you to, to keep him in spite of all of the other dogs that are coming into this amazing shelter. But he's a resident and that's why he's the mascot. He is a resident and he just, we became very attached. He was probably my, my first behavioral rehab under Tyson's chance. So um, we just decided everybody fell in love with him. So we just decided we needed a mascot. And then um, I was just kind of doing rescue on the side at that point. And then when he came along and um, that's where Tyson's chance started. So. I love that. And Tyson obviously had a good meal right before he came. Yeah. Yeah. He's a little stinky. Yeah, he's a little tired and he's a little, <laughs> he's a little stinky. Whew, Tyson. Woo. Don't don't work too hard holding that in, big boy. He's known for his <laughs> atrocious, his atrocious flatulence. Yes, yes. Uh, well, you know it's yes. okay. It's a small studio, but we're James is putting a close. But give me that capo. I want to put it on my nose. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Ashley, you have a, a, an enormous number of dogs because you're in Shelby County and because it's no kill, which is an awesome thing. There are a lot of dogs being saved or rescued that normally would be euthanized. So talk to me about the types of dogs that you have in rescue at Tyson's Chance right now and what your program is, because I've actually toured your old facility and I understand you have a new one. I want to hear about that, too. Um, Tyson's Chance started, I have always kind of had a soft spot for the bullies and the problem children and that kind of thing. Um, and so Tyson's kind of started with uh, wanting to take some of the less adoptable dogs. Um, we are probably 85% special needs. Amazing. Um, meaning medical or behavioral issues. Yes. Um, a lot of behavioral issues. Um, and then we also board for about eight other rescue organizations at a discounted rate. And then um, they send a lot of their problem children also. Um, not all problem kids, but a lot of the tougher guys are with me. Um, and then, you know, we take in a lot of, of medical cases. We've had uh, burn dogs, broken legs, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, so pretty much anything that, you know, a lot of the other organizations aren't willing to take on. And then because we have um, a facility for them, we're able a lot of times we don't have to depend on getting a foster home. That's amazing. So. Well, your facility is truly beautiful, and I, I understand you've expanded and you've got a new one. So talk to us a little bit about that, how you made it happen, and what people who are listening can do to help Tyson's Chance with this very special mission. Um, we started uh, in our original location with uh, my my business, which is Shelburne Pet Center. Yes. And we started with boarding, grooming, training, doggy daycare, and then with me having done um, rescue since I was 16, of course, that just followed suit. That wasn't part of the original plan. Yes. <laughs> um, but then the next thing you know, I've got like 20 rescue dogs. We've outgrown the facility. I, I don't know what to do at this point. So we had to split and expand. So um, our original location now is all rescues of Tyson's Chance and then also rescue rescue um, boarding dogs. Um, and then Shelburne Pet Center has moved to the new location um, where we do all the public boarding and, and client grooming, daycare, that kind of thing. Well, one thing I noticed when I toured the facility a few months ago is that all of these dogs know exactly who you are. 
there are staff members there, but they know who mom is and they know who, who the, the queen of, of all of the dogs may be. And mm -hmm. some of them are crated and some of them are, are a little bit more free or some of them are in runs. Like a, a laundry room is Tyson's home, which is pretty awesome. It's a nice <laughs> laundry room too. But every dog responds to you so amazingly. How do you create that aura around you that, that commands that respect with these huge, powerful dogs who have been unmanaged up to now? Um, just a lot of, of training and building trust, you know, and, and learning to work a group of that many dogs and learning to work dogs on manners while they're in their kennel. Um, you know, they know they get goodies if they're, if they're quiet and well-mannered in the kennel. They know the treats come and, um, you know, that kind of thing. And we work really, really hard, not only for the Tyson's dogs, but the rescue boarding dogs and also our public boarding dogs. Um, you know, they are on a pretty vigorous exercise routine. We've got um, play yards and with the rest rescues to keep them from going kennel crazy. Yes. Um, you know, they have a, a chewing schedule. They have a running schedule. They have a, they go on walks with our volunteers. So um, they're pretty structured. And really, we try to get a lot of exercise into these dogs so that, you know, and a lot of rotating them, moving them around and things just so that they don't get stale. Basically. What does Caesar say? Exercise, discipline, affection in that order? Yeah. You, f you pretty much follow that, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. Have you ever thought about applying for the LMAS job that Justin Scally has just left? You're about the fourth person that's yeah. asked me Well, that's that. what I'm thinking, because that whole plan that you just outlined sounds to me like the perfect kind of person that we need to have running the Metro Shelter. And, and we've had that in Justin, and he's been absolutely tremendous. And I hope that we have someone who steps up and does I do too. as well as he does. We have, I mean, behavioral, you know, dogs, most of the time when I go into other shelters and, and evaluate these dogs that people have contacted me about, a lot of times it's it's lack of attention and exactly. lack of exercise. Um, they're bored. They don't yeah. have anything to do. Probably 50% of the ones I pull have an extremely high ball drive, work drive. Yes. You know, which means that they're just, they're more intelligent. They need more stimulation yes. than what they can get. Um, and it's really hard to do that with 40 dogs a day. But sure we is. do the best that we can. And, you know, we really uh, work very hard, like I said, to keep them physically and mentally, you know, stimulated. Yeah, even harder to do with several hundred dogs a day, which is what LMAS deals with every day. Right. And they've got a great staff, a lot of great volunteers. And you are always invited to volunteer at any of the animal rescues that we feature on Take It From Tara for Crescent Hill Radio because every single one of these rescues needs your help, not only monetarily, donation-wise as far as food and bedding and, and toys Absolutely. and all those things, but they also need man, man and woman power. We need manpower. There you go. And, you know, we're not a foster-based program. Our dogs are all on site. I have right now like two dogs in foster. Um, so, you know, we need foster homes that are experienced experienced enough to handle these kind of dogs. Um, and not all of our dogs. We have, we've got, you know, there's a 12 week old little puppy there right now that somebody <laughs> dumped on me the other day. So we don't have everybody, you know, thinks that everything that we have needs an experienced home, not necessarily, but like I said, about 80, 85% tend to be bullies or, or special needs. Um, you know, but we need foster homes. More importantly, we need volunteers. We need dog walkers. Um, like I said, we put these dogs on, on a walking schedule. We have a beautiful area to walk That's um, awesome. across the street from the shelter and we need people to come and and walk and we've kind of got a promotion going right now get fit walk a pit yes uh, i like that and, and you know for people who need exercise and want to drop a few pounds why not come and do that while you know i said forget paying the gym membership you can come over here for free absolutely and i guarantee you that between volunteering and helping clean and walking dogs the pounds will fall off absolutely and so, they're going to be doing a great deed at the same absolutely. time which is what the whole key is tell us where your facility is located and give us kind of a general idea of how to find it in Shelby County? Um, Tyson's Chance is at 353 Kentucky Street. Yes. Um, we are kind of diagonally across from the Shelby County Animal Shelter. A lot of people get those get us confused. Which again is a no-kill shelter. No-kill shelter, yes. Um, and uh, we, we take volunteers. We have volunteer orientation. I would recommend getting on our Facebook page. We always advertise when we're going to do a volunteer orientation if you haven't been out with us before. Exactly. Um, and you don't necessarily have to come to an orientation before you can come volunteer because we tend to do them about once a month, but just, you know, to hook up with one of the board members so we can, you know, show you the ropes and that kind of thing. But um, monetary donations. Always needed. Um, yeah, I mean, we're trying to run the facility as well as vet all of these dogs. Um, and uh, that 
tysonschance.com. Um, we have uh, a donate link. We also have a link that's um, subscribe, and we're starting a guardian angel program where we're trying wow. to get monthly donors. Yes. Um, and that works, I believe, through um, PayPal, but sure. it's just automatically deducted from your bank account every month. And we're trying to get people to do $10 a month. I mean, yes. the, the amount goes up to, you know, however much you want to do. But if everybody could just do $10 a month, and then we would know that our vet bills and boarding would at least be covered. So Give up two Starbucks a month exactly, for Tyson's Chance. Exactly. You, your background is very interesting, and I'd like to talk to you about that for a moment because you've had a lot of veterinary experience. Share with us. You started rescuing at 16. Tell mm-hmm. us about the rest of your experience that has brought you to Tyson's Chance. Um, I started in the horse business. Okay. Um, I did saddlebreds and grew up in the barn from old enough to walk and did horses until I was about 19 and then kind of got burnt out on that. Um, and got a job as a veterinary assistant um, at East Shelbyville Animal Clinic. Wonderful. Worked there for five years and just always did rescue on the side. I pretty much always had a dog or a cat or a couple at the house. Um, and, and it just got very addictive and, sure. and grew from there. And um, I went on from there to have my own in-home pet sitting business, which I did for a few years. And then that was just growing to the point where I said, I just really want it all in one location. Good for you. And then that's where Shelburne Pet Center came in. And like I said, then, then the addiction kind of took a hold and Tyson's chance had to be developed. My <laughs> CPA said, you're going to have to stop rescuing or you're going to have to divide this this up. You're, and so. You're 31 years old almost. Mm-hmm. That's pretty mm-hmm. incredible to have basically two businesses, mm-hmm. an animal rescue, the experience that you have, and to manage a large group of people. How many volunteers and staff are you actually handling? Staff, I think we're at about 12, um, and then volunteers. We probably have 10 or 12 volunteers that, you know, are fairly regular. We would love to have twice that many. And are you totally reliant upon contributions for your subsidence? Yes. That's pretty amazing. With Tyson's, we are, yeah. Well, and you're doing an obviously wonderful thing because (laughs) these dogs and large black dogs are the ones that are primarily euthanized first because Mm -hmm. the, the mentality about bully breeds has been so negative for so long in this country. And we've done a lot, you know, a lot of people have done great things to change that thinking. But what is it about Tyson, when you met him and when you knew he was one of your top five problem children, what was it about him that made you think he was worth rehabilitating? Well, I mean, you just, you just know. There's a lot of them that, you know, I would tell you it's very sad, but they have almost gone unmanaged for so long that putting them back into society, unless it's with someone like myself or whatever, you're not going to probably find that person for them. Um, You know, so there's kind of a fine line with, you know, what can be done. And the thing with pit bulls is they're just like any other dog, but they're bigger, they're stronger, and we've got the media going against us. Yes. Um, You know, they're not any stronger than a big black lab. You know, but but you don't have the downfall of the media. Yes. Um, but they're very athletic. They're very strong. And they're terriers first. So I try to tell everybody, think about a Jack Russell. Yes. And then put it in a 65-pound body of pure muscle. That would be like my Gracie, the Jack Russell Beagle, put in Brady's 100-pound Lab Dane body. Exactly. She is absolutely ferocious and he is the most docile dog that ever lived and then you've got Wyatt the ball driven shepherd husky mix Mm -hmm. who needs to exercise and play or he becomes destructive right which is pretty amazing most behavioral issues the root of most behavioral issues is being understimulated not not having enough to do okay so. so I want to talk a little bit about the chewing schedule the walking schedule the playing schedule How much activity and energy do you give to these dogs on a daily basis that you can recommend to those pet owners who are saying, gosh, my dog is a problem. I have so many problems with my dog. It's always about the dog. What can you say to them to say, take that some of that responsibility on yourself. You're not doing enough to keep them stimulated. I I brag about this, you know. I know. The other shelters and things will say, well, how do you do that? But all of our dogs, every one of them, is in a play yard, uh, a large yard, and we pair them up. For the most part, we don't have anybody that really has to stay single. We have a couple that are dog aggressive that need to be by themselves. But for the most part, they get a a play buddy and they go out in the yard by twos. They have play dates. And we match them up with their according to the energy levels of the dogs. We match them up. Um, They're out there six to eight times a day, depending on the weather. Incredible. Um, On top of that, we have the volunteers that come in usually about, I would say, every day we have probably at least one walker in there. Um, We need way more than that. Because what we do is, you know, the four or five dogs that are having maybe the most energy that day or aren't having the best day because they really want to go do something else, we send them with our experienced walkers out to get walked also. Fantastic. Um, And then everybody always keeps 
bones, hooves, and those are all things we need donations of. Yes. Um, they always have something to chew on. They Wonderful. have to. Yeah. Because um, that burns energy, too, and it makes their minds work. Well, yeah, and it gives them something to do besides tear the blanket up or, you know, pull at the gate or those kind of things. So, <laughs> you know, we just we try to really keep them stimulated. Um, you know, we've got some 10 by 10 kennels that we let them go out and get some fresh air in. So they rotate through those also during the day where they can have a little bigger space and get out and kind of see the other dogs and that kind of thing. So, All right. I want to have you come back. Um, on a regular basis because I don't want this to be a one-shot deal. I want you to bring Tyson or bring another adoptable dog that you have rehabilitated because you're doing a lot of rehabilitation work on all of these dogs and and come in regularly so we can continue because this media is for you. And sure. this, this this radio station and this show advocates for adoption of the bully breeds. And the work that you're doing is phenomenal. We appreciate you so much. Once again, Tyson's Chance can be found on Facebook or Tyson'sChance.com. Mm-hmm. And you can go to Shelburne Pet Care in Shelby County, mm-hmm. which is awesome if you need dogs boarded. And if you have the ability to go and help Ashley with this tremendous work that she's doing, I encourage you to do it because it's not only a phenomenal facility, she's a phenomenal woman. And she's got a huge support staff around her of friends and volunteers. But always more are necessary. And, of course, Tyson, the vicious dog that he is, who has been lying here docile at your feet during the entire interview. Uh, Hi, Tyson. What a good boy you are. Are you going to stand up and show us how beautiful you are? He says, no, I'm going to roll on my bag and let you rub my stomach. (laughs) (laughs) He is the best boy in the whole world. i got to take a picture of you with my phone so I can keep you. Right next to my heart all the time. And I just, oh my gosh, Tyson, you are just the cutest thing that ever lived. Look, Tyson. Hi. Hi, cutie pie. Oh, he says, yeah, that's that's the kind of loving I need is mama love. Say hi to, oh, there's the good boy. I love it. very tired. Yes, I can tell. And he's going to go home in a thunderstorm now. So Ashley Shelburne, (laughs) Tyson's Chance Rescue, thanks so much for the time he spent with us. Thank you very much for having us. I love you. I've gotten lots of good love on you in the last half hour while you've been here. So thanks for coming in and being on the radio. Thank you. Appreciate you so much, Ashley and Tyson. We want to thank ABC Security for their sponsorship of Take It From Tara and uh, Linda Herrick Hillenbrand. We're so proud of you for the Champions Award you won in the campaign for Woman of the Year for Leukemia and Lymphoma. Thank you very much to ABC for sponsoring. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Man and Woman of the Year campaign is a national 10-week campaign to raise funds to help find cures for blood cancers. Candidates like Linda Herrick Hillenbrand utilize their leadership abilities and resources to conduct their own fundraising campaigns. And Linda won the Champions Award this year for her efforts. Monies raised help the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society fund blood cancer research and provide education and support services for patients and their families. LLS.org forward slash KY for more information, 584-8490. Thank you to ABC Securities, Linda and Jim Hillenbrand for their efforts to fight leukemia and lymphoma. Thank you to ABC Security for their sponsorship of Take It From Tara and Linda Herrick Hillenbrand and Jim Hillenbrand, two fantastic friends of the show and of the radio station. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to be a part of your campaign because, Linda, you did a great job and we are extremely proud of you for all the work that you did for leukemia and lymphoma. Our musical guest is James Sane, and we've got a short one. Thank you, Ashley and Tyson. Drive carefully in the storm. Thank you so much for being here. We want to hear a short piece. Okay. Let's do Let's do a minute, minute and a half. What do you got? Keep up with the rainy day kind of music. Okay. Do a little AA Bondi. I, I love it. I think I've done this once previously. Okay, good. We'll let's hear it. it. James Sane. Up with the evening sun The river rolls on by The neighbors say to secrets Neighbors say to lies Somewhere a plane went down All the things that never stop Somebody feels the night when it calls the call for the living and the dying, how easily you run. Do ya? Don't go around the devil's loose. Hey, hey, Bondi, I love it. Thank you so much for that beautiful song. Start thinking of another rainy day song, okay? I think I got it. I think you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Bauer joins us, who happens to be 
one of my hairstylists and most recent hairstylist. I've been at the Chopping Block Day Spawn Salon since 1984, believe it or not, which just goes to show you I'm a creature of habit. And I started out with Gary, and then I went to Greg, and then I went to Sally, and then I went to Sandy. And Sandy's the owner now, and she's so busy that I thought, what the heck? I'm going to try one of the new kids on the block. And gosh, I was lucky enough to get Megan. Megan Bauer, thank, thank you. you so much for coming in today. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here because you have just done so much. And tomorrow, I mean, right now I'm at like a major outgrowth. So tomorrow you're going to chop it all off and make me feel I've better. i got you down at one. <laughs> you got me down. Thank God for that because this hair is going crazy, especially when it rains and thunderstorms. It starts to curl. Yeah, that's what happened to mine too. Woohoo! Your hair looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it went through a little bit of a curl out there. It's a little humid. <laughs> now it's thunderstorming everywhere. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the unique experience that you have had in becoming, uh, first of all, a beauty school non-dropout, because you actually right. finished, right. so that was awesome. And then I want to talk a little bit about the apprenticeship program that you went through at the Chopping Block, because this is a unique opportunity for young women and men who've gone to beauty school to learn the ropes at literally at the, the, the knee of a master stylist, Absolutely. and then to become a master stylist and how you actually have to start your own business. And this is a, an elaborate story, so we're going to start with the it beginning. Is. What yeah. made you go to beauty school? Um, I've always wanted to be a stylist, but... But, you know, back when I graduated high school, mom wanted me to go the good old college route. So Absolutely. I did it. Um, and I'm only about a semester away from graduating with my bachelor's. Good. But I didn't really finish because, I, you know, life happens. And I got married and had a baby. And after I was stayed at home with her for two years, my husband finally said, you know, don't go back to doing what you were doing. I want you to get up every morning and be happy. So Wonderful. I went to hair school. And it took me about two years to complete. Some people it takes a little less, but, you know, being a mom and um, a new wife and a new mom, things happen and sick days here and there. Yes. So I went through hair school and it was kind of intimidating with being like the older in the group. Oh, you, you know? were. Yeah. And you're very young. A lot of, well, I went into hair school at 25. Wow. But a lot of girls are straight out of high school. I yeah. mean, they knew right off the bat what they wanted to do. And so you were an antique at 25. I was. I God, was, I never I should go to hair school. School. I know. Gosh. <laughs> so um, went through it. It was great. Um, they teach you a lot, but just enough to be dangerous. Yeah, you said yeah. the first day on the floor was nerve wracking. It was very nerve wracking. I I remember doing getting the the ticket and it said um, a full highlight, and the girl had hair past her hips. Wow. Luckily to this day, she's still clean, man. Yay! Good for so you. You did it I did right. A good job, but she yeah, it was it was nerve wracking because um, I remember it taking me about three hours. <laughs> When it should have only taken about, you know, an hour to weave her hair. It took me 45. You, or, you, an hour and 45 to weave her hair. So it took me three hours total. So it was very nerve wracking. Well, but you whipped through my haircut and color in about two hours, which is great. And, and I've got a lot of hair. So you, you did have it. a lot more hair than people yeah. can even imagine. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you keep cutting it off and it just keeps coming back. Yeah, I could cut your hair for a week and Thank it'd you. still be there. Thank yeah. you. The apprenticeship <laughs> program that, that follows beauty school, because you, you literally almost, you, you are you finished with beauty school when you start the apprenticeship or is that a you're part of it? You're done with beauty school. You're done with your, your, your state recommended hours okay, and, good. and you go and you clock out for the last time at 1800 hours. Kentucky's one of the longest programs in the country. Um, That's why our hair all looks so good, and, right? We have to do a lot of hours. I so bet. We, um, you go and you clock out for the last time and then you're able to take your state boards for your apprentice. Yes, your apprentice license. I gotcha. Which you have to do six months with a salon, not necessarily with a mentor like we do at the chopping block, but at a salon, then you're allowed to go and get your master's license, which is basically the same test. It's just a little bit less time you get to do it. In. Amazing. So the, yeah. the basis of the apprenticeship is for you to be literally, and I, I saw you do this because I've been there for so long. You watch, you observe, you assist the master stylist. And it mm. happened to be Sandra Abrams Collier, who's the owner of the chopping block. Right. And you I couldn't so learn lucky. from anybody no, better. I got so lucky. So tremendous. And then you started to learn the processes and do the work yourself. They teach you basically, I mean, Sandy's had 39 years experience and they basically teach you. And she's only them, 45. Right. It's I don't amazing. know how she does it. It's amazing. But they, <laughs> <laughs> they literally teach you their 39 years experience in, you know, six to 12 months. It's amazing. And and you get all of this information. And I I can't imagine being a hairstylist without that program. Yeah. And you also I talked about would somebody named Michael Cole. Talk to me about him on Michael Facebook. Michael Cole. Um, yeah. He, if anybody has Facebook, I'd, I really highly recommend that you go and you friend him on Facebook. You follow his page because yes. he just gives daily 
um, advice and tidbits, and they're all hilarious, and they go for everybody in life. But he created the 80-20, or the 20-80, I guess I should call 20, it, 80? Okay, good. where you want to be in the top 20, not the bottom 80 perfect. of stylists. And yeah. they give you the, all the tools and all of the literature to do that in this program at the chopping block that they go to. It's called, um, it's the apprenticeship program by the summit. I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Now you really get into the whole, um, the energy of the salon because you're involved in the team meetings that go Mm -hmm. on and they're literally teaching you all of the things that you need to know from other stylists and your mentor to Mm -hmm. start a new business. And it must be intimidating because here you are fresh out of beauty school, just having had your apprenticeship. How do you build a clientele? How do you get people to come to you? Well, you know, it's it's a lot of referrals. Uh-huh. Um, you word have of to mouth. Do, yeah, word of mouth. Um, of course, social media. I mean, thank goodness I did wait as long as I did because had Facebook and Twitter not been out, it would have been a lot harder. I bet but it would. Free social media is amazing and everybody should be using it if they have a business or anything they want to put out to the world. I love the fact that that Megan sat while I was processing one day outside with me and showed me how to use my new iPhone and put me on Twitter and helped me to get, you know, some great ideas. And and that social networking truly is the key to a lot of people's success right now. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to have it. It's a must. So what else are you doing to actually build work for yourself right now besides the social media? Social media and then referrals. I, um, the chopping block is nice enough. Sandy gave gave us um, tools because they were mostly a booth rental salon, but they gave us tools to go and referral clients. And when I hand a, a new client a card that says you can get $20 off of your next color, cut, service, any service, if you get one of your friends to come in That's and great. your friend gets $20 off too. So oh, I'm wow. handing you $40, share 20 with your friend and come in. And That's phenomenal. Everybody loves free Anything. Money. Yeah. <laughs> free I anything, mean, especially yeah. free money. Right. And, you know, I, I've gotten girls where they've had free hair services by giving me three or four clients. Amazing. So, yeah, they're very motivating for friends and family. I love family that. And... I'm going to start talking about Megan Bauer, Megan Bauer, <laughs> Megan Bauer, Megan Bauer. <laughs> The Chopping Block Day Swan so Salon. And just get $20 every time. Exactly. And you guys are located on Sharon Avenue, which yeah. is right across from Trinity High School in mm-hmm. St. Matthews uh, on Shelbyville Road mm-hmm. and v- right behind Burger King. Yep. You Let's go just right, go for the landmarks. Yep. Go turn. Close to the old Sears building. Right. Turn on Burger King <laughs> and you're going to go to the first stop sign and it's the big yellow house on the left. You can't miss us. Well, and you can be reached uh, at your Facebook page, yes. Megan Bauer. Uh-huh. You want to give a Bauer number? Megan Bauer backslash hairstylist. Okay. Um, the salon number is 896-1551, and you can call and ask for me. And we have everybody Everybody in our salon is amazing. They we're, are. We're like a family. You um, are. And I just couldn't have asked for a better place. And I honestly would recommend everybody coming out of hair school, girl, boy, man, woman, it doesn't matter, try to find a salon that fits your personality and has an apprenticeship program it doesn't have to be exactly ours but some kind of mentoring program wonderful that i mean it's it's something that takes your business to a whole new level that's great and we're yeah. going to follow you okay yes please I'd do love i'd love to come back see my fans come back and yeah. i will definitely see you tomorrow yes one o'clock for you the big be haircut there. thank yeah. you i will be there or b square <laughs> thanks so much to megan bauer of the chopping block day spawn salon starting a new business just shared a lot of great ideas with you on how to do it for yourself you can contact her on facebook and i'm sure she'll be happy to give you all the free tips that she's so good at doing she's yes. a wonderful person to have cutting my hair for two hours because thank i can you. get all kinds of great feedback from her thanks for coming in thank you see you next time all right hey james give us another rainy day song all right Mississippi Delta But shining like a national guitar I'm following the river Down the highway Through the cradle of civil war I'm going to Graceland, Graceland Memphis, Tennessee I'm going to Graceland A poor boy and pilgrim with family and we are going Graceland.
That's Paul Simon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's exquisite. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do me a huge favor. Excuse myself for a yeah, minute? Yeah, just get out of the chair for a minute, because I've got two other musicians who are coming in, and this is really going to be fun. I'm talking to Nan Moore of the Louisville Winds. Hi, Nan. Glad to have you with us today. And you have brought Pat and Mary Stuckmeyer, who are fabulous musicians. Guys, can you slide behind me into those chairs right there mm -hmm. and find your spot? And we're going to have uh, an oboe and a euphonium, I believe. Is that correct? Watch, sorry about that. But bassoon, watch that cord that's attached to the top of your... Uh, yeah, we have to do these live changes out on live radio Ustream. So thank you, James. The musical guest is also the... Um, musical assistant today, and we got that set up, so get, get yourself squared away there, okay. Kathy, I know you've got these mics set where you want them, right? And they're in the right places, so we're good. All right, good to see you guys. Hello. Talk into these little microphones when you talk to me so everybody can hear what you have to say. And okay. we'll start out with the leader of the pack. Great. Nan Moore, who's one of my two best friends. Mindy Cumberlidge is in the studio supporting Nan Moore and the Louisville Winds and Pat and Mary Stuckmeyer. So I appreciate you guys coming down today. And Nan is the longtime band director of Louisville Male High School. And we have had the privilege of playing some of your concerts on Crescent Hill Radio for special occasions like New Year's and Christmas, which I loved. And you started the Louisville Winds as a, a, an outlet for yourself and for other professionals like you who really want to continue playing their instruments and, in your case, conducting. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that. That's true. Well, about two years, uh, two years ago in the spring, my schedule opened up a little bit, and there had been several people that had said, um, particularly some former students, that said they would like to have a band again and get to play together. So uh, we just started uh, contacting people that would uh, be nice players to be in the ensemble, and we've grown from there. And we have... Uh, normally about 45 people that play in the group. And it's an amazing group. And we just did a concert at Louisville Amp uh, Iroquois Amphitheater, which yes. I was happy to emcee and just enjoyed the music so much. And it was a beautiful day. And you always have a theme for the concerts. And so this one was just a lot of really awesome summer music. Yeah, we kind of planned that concert to be sort of like a, a concert in the park back at the turn of the 20th century when yeah. lots of major cities had bandstands and people came to the park to listen. Lots so. of marches and all kinds of fun music. And, and I know you guys are, are developing a schedule for yourselves, and I'm not going to put you on the spot, but do we have any future concerts planned at this moment that we um, can talk about? We don't have dates, but we will have a concert in uh, October, late October. Good. And then we'll do a, a holiday concert again uh, in December. Well, and we had a magnificent concert earlier. Uh, earlier this year, which was right after uh, the shootings in Newton, Connecticut. Yes. And I remember we were in a church in St. Matthew's and we had we a were. full house and it was the most amazing experience because the, the, the poignancy, especially of the music when you play it all through the night, was just so incredible. And to hear a wind ensemble of this magnitude playing this music, it's just, it's just the most touching and beautiful sound. And yet it can also be a lot of fun. And you can yes. kind of get that, that feel of, uh, of the marches and the 4th of July kind of atmosphere right, with right. a wind ensemble. They're really a versatile group of players. And it's, uh, it's really great fun to just get to work with them and, and stand in front of them. And they're, they have a wide range of what they can do with their instruments. So it enables us to play many different types of music. I love that. And the best part, I think, about uh, the Louisville Winds is that, well, one of the things is that Mayor Greg Fisher has kind of adopted you as his his personal little band because you guys played for his inauguration. Well, actually, it was the mail band. The mail oh, band. Oh, the that mail played band. For his inauguration. Oh, well, yeah. I'm so bad. Well, it's okay. He likes the Louisville Winds, too. Yes. Yeah. Right, Mayor Fisher? Call me and tell me if I just misquoted you. No, no we, he was. I think he, was he loves you. To, he actually, was going to come to our concert at Iroquois, but I believe it was the weekend that the Dalai Lama was in. That's Louisville true. And he was committed to that. That's so. true. He had to follow the Dalai Lama all around town. Okay. Well, let's talk to your to two musical guests. Would you like to introduce them? Well, this is uh, Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer, and they're uh, new residents actually in Louisville, and they've come to play with us in the Louisville Winds, and they've added so much to our ensemble. So we have a wonderful bassoon and euphonium player here. I love that, and you guys also have a brand new business, which I would like you to talk about because it's something that all musicians love. Yeah, we own, <laughs> um, we own a, a music store here in Louisville called the Louisville Music Company. Cool. And um, we just opened about a month ago. We've been in business online for about seven years. Um, and we've kind of almost always catered to the pro musician up until now. We kind of wanted to open something that was more community need based and what the local community and local musicians would need. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, Pat, about the two of you, your musical background and your degrees. Sure. 
Um, well, we met at the uh, University of Kansas. Um, I was doing my master's, and Mary was doing her undergraduate. Wonderful. And uh, then I went and studied in England for a year um, with my, because my instrument is a, uh, um, has its roots in the brass band. Got it. So I went over to England and studied for a year. And uh, then we went to Arizona State, which is where we were before we came here. We mm-hmm. lived in Phoenix for five years. Pretty amazing. You're both doctorate? We are. Oh, ah, yeah. that's amazing. And and to be able to come in and join a professional ensemble, the caliber of the Little Winds, I know, was probably a great surprise. Yeah, it, it was. We played in quite a few different, um, I mean, for lack of a better term, community band, but it, it's... It's, it's not just it's a community band. Yes, of course Definitely. it is, because yeah. Nan conducts it. That's right. And no, she's the best the conductor. In the, well, in the group. <laughs> and everybody in it is musicians. The great part about the Louisville right. Winds is that everybody does something else during the day, but they're all musical-based and just a very high level of musicians. That's right. A lot of them are professors yeah. at the college and high school level and teachers of music, and uh, they all they do many different things, from nurse practitioner to engineer to former military. So it's wonderful to have this diverse and eclectic group of people mm-hmm. come together and perform music. And I'd like to hear what you guys are going to do. You actually uh, edited a piece for us, which is nice because we didn't have as much time as you needed for a sure. four-minute piece. What are you going to play for us? Um, we this have a is... duet by Dieter. Yeah. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Duet. What's it called? Duetto Duet 3. Duetto 3. <laughs> Pick up that euphonium and let's get going. This is yes. Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer, two of the musicians who belong to the Louisville Winds. Nan, are you going to conduct? Oh, no. No, you're no just going to let no, no free, No free conducting today. All right, no. here you go. Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer. <laughs> Thank you so much you. for the truncated version. It, yeah. it lasts about four minutes, and you got that into two thirty, right? Yes. Pretty cool. Thank you so much. Well, Nan, a little little uh, background on the Louisville Winds. You have, as I said, a lot of professionals, a lot of people who are in the teaching field, but mm-hmm. you also have added some former male high school band students. Correct. 
Tell us a little bit about some of those folks, because I tell you what, it's it's always amazing to me. Kids come out of a high school, they think, ah, I'm going to take off, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to have my own life, but they always seem to come gravitating back to the favorite teachers. Well, I think sometimes that's true, but a lot of the a lot of the people that are in the band that are former students are actually uh, music teachers in the area, and then we have one uh, that's actually uh, an instrument repair technician. That's awesome, and uh, is actually working with Mary and Pat now uh, at their location. But uh, so a great uh, the vast majority of them are involved in music in some way now. Wonderful. One more time, talk to us about your location and how we can find you if we wanted to either get some music or get some some instrument repair done at your new place? Yeah, we're located in Middletown, just inside the Outer Belt, I-265, and on Shelbyville Road and English Station. So um, pretty close. Are you on um, Facebook? Um, we do have Facebook. We have Twitter, I think, as well. I think so, um, yeah. You know, we starting do, to get into that social, social media. <laughs> oh, Talk no. to Megan Bauer, the hairstylist. Yeah. She'll tell you how to do it all. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has. To. We have one of our employees that all they do is it's social n- networking. That's awesome. And social networking and marketing and everything. And good so, for you. And yeah. and if we have something broken at home that we'd love to be able to play again, you think you can fix it? Oh sure. We yeah. have a great repair man. His name's Norm Epley, and yeah. uh, he's fantastic. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to find us, um, our website is LouisvilleMusicCo.com. Okay, Louisville and, Music uh, Co. The uh, address is 13040 Eastgate Parkway. Excellent. Give us a telephone number. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> it's 502-365-1431. Fantastic. No, that, that's not it. That's, that's the close. Fax line. One, one five, five nine, nine seven. seven. <laughs> there we go. Don't call my fax line. Do not call it. Whatever you do, do not call the fax line. Awesome. Mary and Pat, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having yeah. Appreciate you. And we'll have you back again. And we want to also just promote the fact that the Louisville Winds has its own Facebook page, Nan. Yes, it does. And you guys have a website as well we do what is it i'm not sure louisvillewinds.com i'm pretty sure louisvillewinds.com google louisville wins that would be a good thing to do and uh we love the fact that when we record your concerts we get to use them as wonderful um programming opportunities on crescent hill radio so we're happy to share that because we want more people to hear us and come to our concerts absolutely and that's the key so the next one is planned for october keep up with them on facebook and at louisvillewinds.com so you can learn more about this wonderful organization and thank you nan moore for being with us today thanks for having us come out Conductor of the Little Winds with Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer, who are new members of the Little Winds, and we welcome you and your beautiful music and your new store, LouisvilleMusicCo.com. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us today. We want to thank uh, Eternal Health Yoga for their constant support and sponsorship of Take It From Tara. And I, of course, enjoy my yoga down there on Frankfurt Avenue on a regular basis. So once again, thanks to Shelly Carpenter and Eternal Health Yoga. Eternal Health Yoga at 3410 Frankfurt Avenue in Louisville's Crescent Hill is dedicated to sharing the joyful benefits of yoga with you. Teacher training 200-hour program is certified with the National Yoga Alliance and classes are offered seven days a week by certified yoga instructors. Varied class packages available including the introductory 30 days for $35. All levels welcome. EternalHealthYoga.com online and on Facebook 502-424-3164. Celebrating seven years of serving the Louisville Southern Indiana community. Wonderful, a wonderful supporter, Eternal Health Yoga of Take It From Tara and Crescent Hill Radio. Shelly Carpenter and her great crew of teachers down there at uh, Frankfurt Avenue have just made my life so much better with my yoga practice. And James Sane, um, you got another musical song in you. I think the rain may have actually stopped. Oh, no more rainy day No, you can still do another rainy day (laughs) song. It's okay. Take one to us. Uh, James Sane, ladies and gentlemen. When picked up by his friend, great fun seemed left for dead. Northern skies look like the end of days, end of days. Wake up, call to a red room, sounding like an alarm of impending doom. Warn, it's only a matter of time. Oh, you burn Before we open Before we open Before we open such an 
nice touch. <laughs> such a nice voice and such a nice touch on the guitar. Thank I love you. that. We've got um, a little bit of extra time, and which is really good because we want to have the opportunity to talk to Becca White. Uh, Becca and I met when we co-hosted Louisville Live together a couple of years ago, and remained friends ever years since. Already, <laughs> it has been. Isn't it funny? Yes, it, it was that... 2011. I came in December of wow. 2010. And I was the last co-host that you had, basically, because the show had run for three years, and then the station was sold, and we, we all got canceled, which was really sad, because you and I had a heck of a show there. Well, let me tell you a little something. I have to say I'm a little proud of you. Why is that? Because during our beautiful song over here, I saw you over here on your phone. <laughs> and let me give you a little history about Miss Bassett. Um, the phone that you had, I, from my memory, slid out. Uh-huh. And you used both fingers, uh -huh. and I think you might have been a pecker <laughs> at one point. And you were over here. You, she took a picture of me. She did some some doodads. I didn't even know you could do on her iPhone over here, and just posted it right away. I so, did. Hats Thank off you. to Miss Bassett. Thank Holy you because, cow! Yes, I still going got the slide. I know <laughs> she's joined. She's joined the social media. I mean, I have, you're above and beyond. I well had done. to. I, you know, this was free because it's a four, it's a four. It's not a five. It's so a four. what? And they gave it to me if I renewed my contract. So that was cool. And I've had so much fun with it. I, my mouth dropped I bet open. It she, you just like <laughs> you know, fifteen seconds, boom, she's done. Well, and you remember the old phone? It was you know, constant self-portrait time when we were on Louisville Live. We were always taking pictures of ourselves and our guests to promote it because they didn't have any advertising money, so we were promoting ourselves. But your poor photos, they were grainy, and your poor phone, it was falling apart. I know. That's just super jazzy. So well I done. <laughs> She's up in the world. Thank you. And you taught me a lot about that <laughs> stuff. So I know. You're going to start teaching me now. <laughs> you, and, you and Erica Benton, who was our intrepid producer, really brought me into the, the new year because that's when I bought a laptop for the first time. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to learn how to post and do social media. So the awesome. times they are changing. I know. <laughs> so you and I had a huge farewell on the air when you decided to leave television in August or July, actually like June of 2011 and you wanted to become a flight attendant that was a, a just an exciting goal that you had decided to pursue and tell me about that experience because it was a, it was different than you expected well it was <laughs> ever since I grew up I wanted to be on TV I watched the news with my parents it was just what I wanted to do I went to school for it and I lucked out got a job at WBKI in Louisville and Grew up there, basically, from an intern all the way to co-hosting. And um, then on a whim, you know, I went uh, for, th there was a job, you know, a, a job casting, I guess they called it, to uh, be a flight attendant. So I went, they offered me the job, and I thought long and hard about it, and I, it was on my bucket list. So I, you know, I think I gave like a five-week notice yes. to the TV station. Yes. And... Um, so I left, you know, I, I didn't know what it was going to entail. We had a long and painful farewell, too. Yeah, it was. It, awful. It was and it, I had, you know, butterflies and I, I was nervous and I went and went through training and training was difficult. And I still was like, eh, and, you know, my, my parents <laughs> were like, you can do it. And I got through training with flying colors and then I, I got done with training and I had five choices of where I could be based. Yes. And I wanted everywhere except for my fifth choice, which oh, was no. Columbus, Ohio. Oh, and no. And where did I get based? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> so away I went. And lived in a flop room. I lived in what they called a crash pad, uh -huh. which was a home. That was owned by a pilot, uh -huh. and there were 20 people living in the house. Oh, and I don't mean living. My. They literally just crashed there overnight. And I was living on a twin air mattress. Wonderful. Good for the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, was, I stayed in a room with five other people. Wow. And I was basically on call from 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wow. Every day. I didn't have a schedule. Doesn't sound like the glamorous life that it, we attach to flight attendants. Nope. Nope. And you have no idea what kind of money you're going to be making. Right. Because you're on call. So you don't know when you could be called. Um, you you obviously have a, you know, a minimum amount. They're not going to not pay you. Sure. But um, you have no idea. What can you live on, though? That's the question. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and a lot of people don't live where they're based. So there's travel expenses. It's sure. just I'm glad that I did it. <laughs> I'm glad you did it, too. I can check that off the bucket list. <laughs> 
But I will not be going it, man. back. I can erase it. You're erase right. Erase it from um, the bucket list. It's very gray on the bucket list, but I won't be going back. But I think I was in the middle of the age of people that were doing it. There sure. were people that didn't go to college that were right out of high school, or there were people that had retired and they were they were looking for something to do with their time. So I was kind of in the middle of um, of the age of people. I think something that people don't realize when you're flying, uh, you know, when you're you're getting all your bags situated and you know, you're you're bugging the flight attendant for something. They're not getting paid that whole time. Wow. It's not until the door shuts on the plane that they get paid. And then when the door opens on the plane, they stop, they getting, stop paid. getting paid. Holy smoke. So let's Did you say, know all this? No. I didn't either. I have a new compassion for flight attendants. So let's say you sit down on the plane and, I don't know, you compl- you're complaining that you don't have don't any know. blankets or you don't ice. Have any bl- you're freezing. Yes. Okay. And, and they're running up and down or your bag's not fitting or there's no room for your bag. And all these people are in the aisle or whatever. Or you're in first class and you want more to drink or something. You're or, getting free service. Or the, the plane <laughs> or you're, you're delayed two hours and you're going to miss your connecting. And you're complaining to your flight attendant. The whole time they're not getting paid. A crazy, You know, crazy. and then what if they're, what if they miss their connecting, the flight attendant themselves. Yes. And they don't get paid for that. You know, it's, so it's a. I can't say enough bad things about it, honestly. <laughs> well, let's talk about the good thing. You came yeah. back and you have a wonderful job. Tell us about that. I do. I work at Strategic Wealth Designers. It's a local investment company. The main financial advisor there is Matt Dickin. Ask Matt Dickin. Yeah. Yeah. His website good is askmattdickin.com. Uh, yeah, it is great branding. Um, you can and you're in charge of questions. that now, right? You're the media coordinator? I am. I'm the media coordinator. He has a TV show that airs, um, it airs on different... Uh, TV stations, but the main one is WHAS Wonderful. 11. Good. It airs on Sundays at 10 a.m. So I uh, produce that. Excellent. And I edit that, so I'm using my college degree. There Yay. you go, that Western <laughs> Kentucky Broadcasting degree. Good for you. <sighs> and uh, he also has a radio show. He's uh, now a bestseller. He has two books out. I love that. So that's great. Good. And um, he's still advising, so that's nice, too. And he's going to be consulting and um, he's a Ballard grad. Great. You know, so he's keeping it local. Yes. And, and he's a really nice guy. And he's young. He's 34 years old. And he's got an am- amazing family and he's mm-hmm. doing great. And that's that's the key. And he's teaching others how to do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really great. So, so what is what is local. next on your bucket list? Do you have any other high-flying things? Because when we were together mm-hmm. on Live Alive, we did a lot of strange things that we'd never done before in our lives. We, we sure did. We had a wonderful experience at Churchill Downs over Derby and we met a lot of awesome people and we did a lot of great interviews in our, in our year together. But the best part of it, I think, was rappelling off the Marriott Hotel downtown. Maybe for you. <laughs> that was listen looking back that was probably the worst for me i loved it i know you did you just we had fun boom 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 polar yeah, plunging you, doing the rappelling off the 22nd floor of the marriott she did that like it was a breeze i wanted to just fly across the building you know i wanted to run back and forth <laughs> like spider-man and, and becca was just wanting to get to the ground that I, was her key <laughs> let me tell you rappelling have you ever repelled no okay well rappelling you have to let yourself down but everything in your brain and your body is telling you to hold on because your entire life you're depends ho- on it. Yes. <laughs> your entire life you've you've taught yourself you want to hold on and not in order not to fall down. So in order to get down repelling, you have to let go. Yes. So it's you're working against yourself. <laughs> it's that's awful. kind of like I a that's like kind of like a life lesson though. In order to move forward, you have to let go. So you let go of the clamp that you're holding really tight, you let it out, and then you start to go, and you descend. And I then feel you like feel there's a the life peace. lesson in there somewhere. There is. There's it's like very a Buddhist. Then something. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to zip line. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Hey, you know, we can do that at Louisville Underground. I've heard that. All right, yeah. let's go do that together, because Patty Schnatter actually told me about that from Lynn's Paradise like Cafe. Fun. It's a great zip line, and it's it's one of the biggest indoor zip lines in the world. So It looks fun and safe. Yes, it is safe. <laughs> well, you know what? Think about this for me, if you will. When you're bored and when you don't have anything else to do and you get off work on a Monday night, would you come back and, and co-host with me for yeah. fun? Yeah. Okay. Cause I'd love that. I'm most comfortable with you sitting here next to me. Oh, Brings back lots of good memories. Oh. And we'll create new ones. Okay. I love that. So Becca White. What a compliment. Becca White, my friend, uh, my co-host, and most of all, just somebody really special to the Louisville community who I'm so glad took time to come in after Aww, a long day of work and you. through the thunderstorm all the way from was, the East End. It's crazy. <laughs> I bet it was. And all still wearing the excellent shoes, I yeah. see. 
Got to have them. Still, still shoe <laughs> shopping. I tell you what, Becca White, ladies and gentlemen, James, can you take us out with uh, a lovely piece? And I'm going to do one more quick promo, which is thanking Meridian Acupuncture, which uh, has really changed my life as well. We really want to thank them for the ex- excellent acupuncture services that they have, but they also have a complete Chinese herbal pharmacy, which is very rare and wonderful. So thanks to Meridian Acupuncture for their sponsorship of Take It From Tara. Meridian Acupuncture provides healthcare services to improve and promote the well-being of their patients and the community they serve. Meridian's vision is to educate and empower us to make healthy lifestyle choices, to understand how to heal ourselves, to prevent illness, and to recognize that health is a daily journey. Meridian's practitioners of East Asian medicine specialize in allergies to depression, to menopause, and much more. Trying to stay healthy? Coping with stress? Managing serious illness? Meridian Acupuncture is a resource. 311 Wallace Avenue in St. Matthews, 290-8788, meridianlouisville.com. Meridian Acupuncture and Chinese Herbal Medicine. Thank you very much, Wallace Avenue in St. Matthews. And uh, we want to thank our musical guest, James Sane, for being with us today. And got the bad news, he's moving to Nashville at the end of the summer. So I'm going to have to have him back a couple of times and get all of his great music on record on Take It From Tara. Tyson's Chance, uh, Ashley Shelburne, and Tyson, the mascot. What a wonderful couple of guests they were. Megan Bauer of the Chopping Block Day Spa and Salon. Thank you for coming in and teaching us about going through beauty school, becoming an apprentice, and starting your own business. What an exciting life you have ahead. And of course, Nan Moore of the Louisville Winds with two wonderful musical guests, Mary and Pat Stuckmeyer. You just made our show. Next Monday, June 24th on Take It From Tara, Derby City Dog Rescue is here with the inimitable Caroline Kaufman. She's a lawyer by day and a dog rescuer by night and day and weekend. Susan Dallas is here from the Louisville Convention and Visitors Bureau, and she always has a lot of great stuff to talk about. The Honesty Coach, Marina Durvin, is in the house challenging you and your integrity. You're going to really enjoy this. We're going to give her a little extra time for that. And Rusty Bladen will be our musical guest. The show is sponsored by ABC Security for Linda Hillenbrand's Woman of the Year campaign for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. All that and more next Monday, 5 to 6, on CrescentHillRadio.com. You can tune in on your smartphones through TuneIn Radio or just join us on the AM dial anywhere in Crescent Hill. I'm Tara Bassett. Thanks so much for joining us today. James, take us on out to a wonderful Korean heady jingle. What are you going to sing for us last? Oh, no, let's just go with it. All right, go for it. James <laughs> Sane, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great week. She grabs a magazine. She packs her things and she Bounds our notes And she knows She's been here too few years Be Oh Smoke cigarette Stayed outside till it's gone Anybody ever had a heart? Well, it wouldn't be alone. But he knows it's been here too few years to be alone.